So we put a lot of money uh, into an own e-commerce, a lot of own solutions, and in the end, uh, we went bankrupt. Um, first of all, I want to go a little bit uh, through my life as a, as a founder uh, and investor um, because for me, stories about real lives of, of founders, investors, were always the, where I learned the most. Uh, it's pretty tough to talk about all the bad things that I did, but I believe it's so important that I give it to you so you hopefully can make the same uh, mistakes. Then I want to talk about uh, some recent learnings of the app economy and what I believe uh, has changed and uh, what you have to look at. And then the third and most important part for me is that you give me uh, questions. So you are going to found a company um, that's a good opportunity for you to ask a question. Be very open, give me questions. So while I'm talking about all the mistakes that I made, write it down. Um, Wunderlist would be a great app to write it down in the notes and then uh, give me the questions. Do I have a clicker or something? No. Oh, wow. okay. It's startup, right? Um, so how can I then... <laughs> so, uh, the question is how long I'm doing this. Um, I started actually when I was, um, I don't know, 16, but I wasn't allowed to to register officially a company. So uh, when I was 18, the first thing I did was uh, register my uh, first company. Uh, one of the people I'm working with over 20 years now, Andre Chris, is sitting over there. Uh, he's now a very successful founder. Uh, and we basically yeah, started uh, together like 20 years ago. So this is um, where, where I started uh, in 1984 in a CD-ROM era. And why I'm bringing this up is that I believe it is important that you understand that the industry is going from era to era. And you have to understand for what you are developing. And at this time, it was all about CD-ROMs. It was the, the big hot thing. So I developed a framework where people could ship multimedia CD-ROMs. And uh, one and one that was uh, our first uh, big customer. And it's always important, like now the watch is coming. Is it the right platform for you? Is it the right way? Or maybe not, not an error that you should jump on. But you have to understand that there are technologies, clear errors, and your startup has to fit and has a clear plan how to use it, utilize this. Uh, in 97, I found a, um, a hardware uh, company. Uh, we basically uh, created a, a, a LAN internet connect um, hardware. At this time it was not a, a, a small piece that you can buy very cheap, but it was really rocket science to connect local area networks uh, with the internet. And what I, what I learned here is that hardware is really, really complicated. So whenever you build something that includes hardware, it's really tough. Because it's not like uh, most of them work, but you ship like 1,000 and you get 300 back because they have a problem, and then you have a huge cash problem. So this was so far my only journey with hardware, and it was really bad. So learning for you, uh, take care of software, and scalable business are much easier than, than developing hardware, which can be a great business, but it brings extra challenges. Then comes the uh, e-commerce e uh, boom, and I was lucky enough uh, to build the first shop for BMW with a lot of uh, naked nice ladies. And um, what I learned is here that uh, always use existing software. So we burned a lot, of, a lot of cash because we wanted to build our own shop software, but there were already um, tools available and we should have used them. But instead, we were so eager at reinventing the wheel and believing that we are the most smart and cool, cool guys. So we put a lot of money uh, into an own e-commerce, a lot of own solutions. And in the end, uh, we went bankrupt. So if there's an existing tool or platform you can utilize, do it, and then look later the magic stuff, but first get onto the market. That was my big learning with uh, building my own uh, e-commerce. And then, 99, I was lucky enough uh, to get my first uh, venture capital. And I got 1.4 uh, million Deutschmarks <coughs> at this time. And 
I did all the mistakes you can do when you receive your venture capital. True story, the first thing I did is to went to BMW and buy a fully equipped car. <laughs> it's a true story. I mean, now, now it now sounds so bad. I'm really sorry, but that's what I did. Uh, and I have to be honest. Um, so when you receive venture capital, your life will change because you look on your bank account and you have millions on it. But force yourself to stay lean, and the money will be gone much faster than you think. And it's really tough because you have so much money now. And uh, I burned it uh, very fast, the money, uh, with, the, with the product. Next, next slide. Uh, by, for example, building uh, an own hosting company, but we just want to have a content management system. I said, okay, we have so much money, let's buy all the greatest hardware from Dell. Uh, everybody gets a fully equipped BMW. And the next slide. That's what happened. We went bankrupt with the uh, RG. So we were planning for IPO, had a big hope, we were burning a lot of cash, but we had no sustainable business. So be careful. Um, building something that works is really, really hard. And, and use every euro very, very wisely and do not the stupid mistakes because you have a lot of venture capital and start fancy offices, fancy cars, fancy stuff. The money will be gone faster than you think. Use every euro. Stay with it. So, uh, with all these this learnings, I did exactly the opposite. Because I was broke, I was very close to private insolvency and personal debt of around uh, 1 million uh, euros. So I was, I was basically, ha I had no friends. Uh, the, the family was, of course, very shocked uh, when the, the, the letter from the bank came at my home. My mother, yeah, she was basically done. She said, oh, you, the, this debt and 10% and, and, and interest, we can never pay this back, son. You ruined our family. <laughs> that's true, that's not funny. Um, so my, my, buddy, my buddy was not working properly anymore. So I started uh, bleeding out of the nose. Um, uh, it was very, very tough because that's the downside of, of this. And it's not that startups are only, they're very beautiful and they're very cool and they're very, very hip at the moment. But they're also serious. It's, it, it's, it's real. And, and here I experienced what, what that meant. So, so aside personally, and I, I had a lot of, a lot of that. And, um, with that experience, I founded a company without any cash because no one would ever give me money. Nobody would ever believe in me again. But because I am a founder, I founded again a company. And um, it was an online photo service company. So it were, again, another new technology were rising and were the digital cameras. There were no smartphones, but there were digital cameras slowly rising. And I built a platform where you can order prints. So you have the digital photo and you want to have prints or later books and so on. And I had to sell it immediately because nobody would give me any cash and I was bankrupt. So I sold it to a T online, it was the first customer without a software, so I lied to them. Sometimes you have to do it because you're a founder. So I said it will be ready in two weeks, no problem. And it took me six months. Um, but I got my cash. I used my cash wisely and we slowly created a company out of our cash flow, we never had any investor in the company, to 100 million customers using our software in 60 companies. So the management had still 100% when we sold the company to Fujifilm to Japan. And we were the clear leader in this niche market of online photo services. So a learning is here, uh, sometimes venture capital is also bad. And it's sometimes good if you, if you have to work out of your comfort zone and really get the shit done. And, and it's possible, but you're more challenged. So then uh, with, the, with the fresh cash in the bank, being very rich, or not very rich, having some euros in the bank account, um, I did my uh, first, um, first investment, uh, it's Kaufda, from Christian Geiser, and uh, I had no clue what I, what I do. So